So you want to learn more about Florida native plants? Maybe you want to add them to your garden, attract the butterflies, save the bees, or maybe you want to reduce some costs, get rid of pesticides, get rid of fertilizers. And maybe you're doing that because you want to do more. You want to do more from the environment and stop red tide. Or you just want a drought tolerant yard. Man, Florida native plants help do a lot of things. Well, today on Wild Florida, we're going to talk about Florida native plants. Hi, I'm Jacqueline the Wild Floridian and welcome to the series about Florida native plants. See, the more you learn about Florida native plants, the more you'll love and the more you'll take better care of not only native plants, but Florida itself. See, this whole series is gonna focus on going deep into different plants that you can add to your yard. So whether you're trying to attract butterflies or be more drought tolerant or just reduce costs, all these things can be covered by Florida native plants. So in today's episode, what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about why you should put Florida native plants in your yard, the basics of the things you need to know, the things you need to watch out for. We'll also give you some basic things that you can think about for putting in your yard from trees to shrubs to edibles to even some flowers. And last but not least, we're gonna wrap it up with some resources that you can use so you can go and just find lots and lots and lots and lots of plants because there's a lot of them and I don't have time to cover them all. And I don't think you wanna watch a two day video, do you? Well, maybe you do. Okay, let's get into it. Let's talk about some of the basics and what you need to know first. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I mean, you may be sold on butterflies and droughts and all the good things we just talked about, but wait a minute, there's a few things you need to know before you start. Actually, three things you wanna figure out for your garden. What is your zone? What is the soil? And what's the local ecosystem? Yeah. Because see, it's great that you live on the beach, but that plant that's native to the Everglades doesn't want to live there. Or maybe you live in some pine lands, but you're trying to go make it work over there in that mangrove. It's not going to work. It's not going to be happy and it's probably going to die. And you're going to think, I must have a black thumb. I can't even make a native plant. Well, it's by knowing these three things that's going to make your life a lot easier. Yep. So let's first start with zone. See, zones across Florida, well, we're very north to south, and zones are all about minimum temperature. See, the north part freezes a lot. The south, well, if it freezes, not only do the iguanas fall out of the trees, most of the locals do too. We don't like the cold. So you want to know what zone you are. Typically, Florida ranges from 8B down to 11A, with the center being mostly 9. So Get to know your zone, check out this map and the link below so that you know what your zone is. The next thing you want to know is that you got to know what type of soil do you have. There are five different types of soils that be found throughout Florida. Whether it has some clay like up in the northern panhandle or you have swampy peat if you live in the Everglades or near marshes. Or like a lot of Florida which has Mayaca, which Mayaca is um, very sandy soil. It looks very light gray. Or maybe you just live on the beach and you just got sand. So check out your soil. Now you can do it yourself by just digging some up or you can get it tested so that you can get the most accurate answer. All these are options, but I just like to go and observe. So I'm gonna go make some holes over there in my yard. The next thing you wanna look at is um, go look around your neighborhood. Go look around the areas around your neighborhood. Usually the area is not populated by humans to get an idea of what type of ecosystem is nearby. Now, I'm not gonna say habitat because there are 45 habitats to Florida and that would take forever to go through. So let's just focus on the eight ecosystems. Well, seven, because the first one's coral reefs. We're not gonna focus on that. The next one is gonna be dunes if you live along the beach, you know, with all the sand. And then you're gonna have things like the marshes and the swamps, which are a little bit different from each other. Then you got the hardwood hammocks, which are little consider islands in the swamps, which hopefully your house isn't, but you may be. Then of course, you're gonna have things like mangroves, scrubs, and then of course, pineland. Pineland is the most common here in the state of Florida, so that may be your ecosystem. So now you know your zone, your soil, and your ecosystem, and combine those together, and you've got a great picture of what plants are gonna be happiest in your yard. Yeah, and this is really important, especially if you're trying to attract pollinators, like bees and butterflies and even hummingbirds. Yes, all these are gonna come to your yard, especially if you focus on plants that are native to your ecosystem because they already like those plants and you're just bringing them in, just bringing them in. So the basics, do you know Florida State Flower? Did you say orange blossom? Good job. 
You have that beautiful flower that smells so good. It's the number one source of nectar for our pollinators and is not native to our state. It's not even native to the United States. It's actually native to Southeast Asia, but it's been here for a really long time. So the reason I tell you that is because there are a lot of plants, exotic plants that have been introduced to Florida for hundreds of years. So they're not native because basically the cutoff for native plants is when Europeans got here. So if they brought these plants in, not native. It doesn't matter how much they're all around in the wild or how much they're in people's yard or even if they're our state flower, they are not native. So I wanted to make you aware of that. And also because sometimes those plants that aren't native are listed as Florida friendly. That is different than Florida native. Native means it was here pre-European times. Post-European times, it might be Florida friendly, it might just be called an exotic, or it can be completely invasive. So just be aware of that. Now what about our state tree, the sable palm? Is it native or is it just like that orange blossom? Well, it is. It is native. Not only is it native, it has another name called the cabbage palm, and that's because it's got a part that's edible to it. Yeah, and that's some of the cool things is that we can find edible plants here too. So something to think about when we're thinking about our yards. And what about our native wildflower? Well, that's gonna be called Coreopsis. Yep, you can find it all along the highways and people are introducing it more and more into their yards. So we learned a little bit about the basics. Our state flower, no, not native. But our state tree, our state wildflower, native. And we talked a little bit about Florida friendly plants. So Florida friendly just really means that they tend to be drought tolerant, they tend not to need pesticides and fertilizers, and they tend not to be invasive. I say tend because hidden amongst the Florida friendly, hidden amongst even Florida native plants are the imposters. Yes, you went to go buy that plant that was definitely native only to find out as you learn more about Florida native plants that not only is it not native, it's invasive and actually toxic to wildlife and livestock. So you were trying to do this good thing and you made it worse, like a lot worse. And why do I bring that up? Because I've done that. Not even just one type of plant, not even two types, three types, four types. I think I've done this with five different types of plants where I thought I was buying a native plant. I was doing good things for the environment, drought tolerant, save money, and I made it worse. So I wanted to let you know so you don't make it worse too. So as we go through this series, when we focus on each individual type of plant, I'm going to have a section where I specifically take you through how to identify the native versus the non-native plant. So that even though someone tells you at the store, yeah, no, 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 they're definitely native. You will have the information you need to know so that you can tell the difference because I think they're well-intentioned, but they just don't know. They just know the name. And I'm gonna tell you even down to the scientific name, because that's usually how we defend ourselves is we learn the scientific name, but even somehow the same scientific name. So enough about those imposters. Let's talk about the real plants that we should be starting to think about for our yard, whether we want butterflies or drought resistant. Let's start first with the big guys, the big kahunas. They're gonna shade our houses. They're gonna provide that heat reduction we need and provide a small little mini habitat for our wildlife, whether they be butterflies or hummingbirds or bees or everything in between from squirrels to birds. We're talking about trees. So if you live on those shores and you wanna consider mangroves or you live on the beach and you wanna think about a palm, like our state palm, the sable palm, or maybe you're considering the giant of the South, the great Southern live oak that live 100, 200, maybe 300 years, we don't even know, and they get huge. Or maybe you wanna go up, up, up and consider things like cypress pines or maples. There are so many native trees. But hey, didn't I mention that the biggest ecosystem for Florida was pinelands? And that's right, pines would be a great choice for your yard. Yep, my favorite is the slash pine. I have them in my yard and I know things from ospreys to the night heron love to make their nests in them. So consider pines or any one of those trees. Oh, and hey, we live in the South. What about a Southern steel magnolia? I mean, just the Southern magnolia. <laughs> you know what's even better than saving money because you've reduced pesticides and fertilizers and you're saving on water? Well, how about uh, saving on food costs? Yeah. Think about putting some edibles in your yard. See, if you live in the north, go for the pawpaw. Or how about the south? Go with a papaya. Or maybe in the north, in the central parts of the state, think about muscadine grapes. You know, what they make Florida wine out of. 
Or have you ever thought about sea grapes if you're along the seashores? Or a favorite of people's to put in their yard is beautyberry. Yep, it has that name because it is beautiful. And not only is it beautiful, birds love it, little squirrels love it, I'm sure other animals love it, and it's edible to you and me. You can make medicines out of it and even types of jams. So consider beautyberry. And speaking of beautyberry for your yard, well, there are other shrubs you should consider. What about oak leaf hydrangea if you live in the north or coral bean if you live on the south? Very tropical look. Or you want to keep out your neighbors? Hey, viburnum's a great hedge line and a favorite for a lot of people across the state, whether you live in the north or the south, is firebush. Yep, it's great for attracting bees, butterflies, and hummingbirds too. And the birds even love it. They love to eat the berries and live underneath it. This is great for even reducing costs for your house by shading the walls and getting that air conditioning bill down. What a win-win for that one. And that's gonna be what we're gonna be talking about in the future episodes. We're gonna focus first on firebush. But what about the flowers? What about La Florida? That's our name, right? The land of flowers? Yep, there are so many native flowers to Florida. How about fleasbane and tick seed and frog's food? Can we get a rename on some of these ones? I mean, seriously, these are awful names, but they're beautiful flowers. Or what about sunshine mimosa? I'm sure it's a drink for somebody, but it's also a gorgeous ground cover. Or dune sunflowers. They used to blanket the beaches natively, and they could blanket your yard too. Or what about, oh, speaking of blankets, what about blanket flower, also known as gallardia? Or you could get coreopsis, or maybe we could get, oh, how about black-eyed Susans, or echinacea, also called coneflower? Or what about uh, blue-eyed grass, or, 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 ugh. I can't even think of all of them. There's so many. So consider those for your yard. Okay, so all I've done is covered just the basics. I mean, the many, many basics. Yes, you can save money so that you don't have to use fertilizers and pesticides. Oh, and we didn't even cover the fact that you can reduce your water costs by 30% by having a drought tolerant yard which the best type of drought tolerant yard is a native yard. Mm -hmm. Yep, and they can also be used to shade your house, which can reduce your energy bill. That's great, and we talked about growing food so you could reduce your food costs. Man, there's a lot native plants can do. But if you're looking for resources on where you can go and find just lists of plants, well, check out the University of Florida IFAS Exchange. I'll link it below. That is a master list for master gardeners on native plants and even Florida friendly plants. The next thing you should consider is, of course, the Florida Native Plant Society. Have you joined yet? Well, you should, because when you go to buy Florida native plants at a lot of local nurseries, they often have a discount. Yep. Also use local nurseries. Now make sure you look for ones that are part of the Florida Native Plant Society. These people will specialize in those native plants and decrease your odds of getting that non-native hiding as a native plant. And another place where you can get more bite-sized pieces is go on Facebook. There are a lot of native plant groups. Some specialize in certain counties, cities. They may be run by the Florida Native Plant Society for your county, or they're just general to the state. They often post a plant or two a day so that you can find out a little bit of information without getting overwhelmed. And if you wanna to continue to go deeper on some of these plants, well, next up is gonna be firebush. Yep, that starter plant for a lot of people. We're gonna cover why you want it in your yard, how you could use it in your yard with different landscaping design ideas, how to tell the native from the non-native, and how to propagate it, and much, much more. So to make sure you don't miss it, go ahead and like, subscribe, and ring that bell for notification. New videos each week. We post on Tuesday and Friday, plus sometimes on Sunday. So go ahead and check it out. Plus, there's all these videos here, here, and here that you may be interested in. Okay, I'll see you soon. Bye.